Hi, this is Graham. Hope everyone's having a great day. I've had a number of requests now to go through the procedure for setting up the AFA lock button. What's it for? When would you use it? And also some queries over the focusing methods this camera employs. So that's the AFS, the AFF and the AFC modes. I'm going to go through those as a combined video so you get the uh, feel for when to use the AFA lock button and which focus method you should use dependent on the type of uh, photography you employ. Let's begin by looking at the AFA lock button. Now first of all it's an autofocus or auto exposure lock so it doesn't work in the manual modes. So the uh, problem you may be having is the fact that you're trying to employ this in the M mode. It's only really applicable to the P, A and S modes. You can use the AE method of lock in manual focus because you're obviously using automatic exposure but you can't use that combined AF lock in manual focus because the facility isn't there. So it's designed to work with P, A and S modes and is a facility that you can use to lock both the focus and the exposure or lock the focus on its own or lock the exposure on its own. Which method you will employ depends on the type of subject you're photographing and I'll try and explain that as I go through the functions of setting up the uh, button itself. In terms of the focusing methods, the difference between AFS, AFF and AFC I'll try to explain and again which one of those you should employ to try and get the best focus method you can with this FZ200 camera. Okay let's begin by looking at setting up the AF and AE lock button and see what we can do with it. Let's begin by defining the functionality of the function 2 button which is the autofocus or auto exposure lock button. To do that we need to go into the menu by pressing the menu set button and the functionality is on page 3 so to quickly get to page 3 use your zoom lever to get to page 3 and then we can cursor down to AFA lock by using the navigation button. You notice we've got the white arrow to the right hand side which gives us more options go across to the right hand side and where we have autofocus, auto exposure, autofocus or auto exposure lock together. I'm going to do the autofocus lock facility for this first example so I'm going to leave the autofocus enabled. Press menu set to lock it in position and then return to your main picture taking menu. You'll notice I've got a very small autofocus area and I've got that by using the focus button on the left hand side of the camera so you press focus and it gives you access then to the autofocus area. You can set its size and position. The position is determined by where you put it with the navigation button and I want the eyes to be in critical sharp focus so I'm going to leave it over the eye and you can change the size of the area by using the top control wheel. So I'm going to have it on the smallest area so that's just the eye that's been defined for the focus point. Now when I press menu set that locks that in position and now when I press the autofocus auto exposure lock button it will change this icon which is saying autofocus single and it will lock the focus on this area. So if I press AEAF lock if you notice we had a green indicator which said we had focus lock and we've now seen this icon change from AFS to AFL which tells me that the camera is locked focus on the area that we defined. If I now take this picture, it will not focus when I press the button, but just take the exposure. So it's very quick because the camera doesn't need to focus, you've told it what the focus is, it will just go on and take that picture. You notice now that the AF lock has still remained enabled. So even though I've taken that picture, the lock stays enabled for you until you either press the AF lock button again, which cancels it, or you turn off the camera and reset it. Let's now look at setting auto exposure lock. Again, access that through your menu, page 3, down to AE lock, and go down to auto exposure lock, menu set, return to your picture taken menu. To use the automatic exposure lock, when we press this lock button, it will lock the exposure that the camera is showing at the moment. Obviously, the camera is in real time and it's showing you the exposure this camera is calculating at the moment. So it's a 40th of a second at f2.8 with ISO 100. If I introduce a different component to the picture, you'll see that the exposure changes. So if I now press the AEF lock button, it will lock the exposure at this point in time. So if you now look, the icon here has changed from the 
uh, evaluative meter mode to one that says AEL, which is uh, auto exposure locked. So if I introduce that component into the picture again, you'll notice now that the exposure doesn't change. So it means that I can move the camera position and the camera will not change the exposure. When I take the picture, it will not recalculate the exposure, it will just focus and fire. So let's take that picture, focus lock, and take the picture. You notice that the camera retained the A lock and the exposure hasn't changed. So we've still got f2.8, one fiftieth of a second. To cancel the exposure as before, we just press the AF AE lock button and that returns us to open metering. The final option is to set the functionality so that both the exposure and the focus are locked when we press the AF AE lock button. So again to page three, down to AF AE lock and set both of the options to be locked. Back to picture taking mode. So you'll now notice that when I press the AF and AE lock button, the camera will first of all focus and lock focus, and then we'll lock the exposure at the calculated point in time. 50th of a second at f2.8, and we can see that the metering circuit is now locked. So it means I can introduce, as before, something into the scene and the exposure won't change, and neither will the focus. And now when I press the shutter button, you'll notice that it doesn't refocus, and it doesn't recalculate the exposure, so the operation is far quicker. So it didn't have to go through a focus cycle, so the exposure is far quicker. So you can use this for things like sports photography. Preset your focus, use the AF lock, and then the camera will fire at the fastest shutter rate you can get. Whilst you're in an autofocus lock mode, you don't get access to change your focus point again. So if you try to press the focus button on the side of the camera, it won't allow you to change that focal point. You need to release the lock off the camera by depressing that lock again, and you notice then we get the AFS symbol coming back up, and now it means that the focus button on the side of the camera is re-enabled, and it allows you to change the focus point to where you want the focus to be. You can use this mode with the burst mode facility. So once you've defined your focal point and pressed the AFA lock button, the camera will focus and lock focus and give you that indication that it got autofocus locked. Go into burst mode shooting, you can set up your, say, five and a half frames per second, and it doesn't matter now whether you've got burst mode shooting set to single or continuous with uh, continuous focus. Um, the camera will use your locked focus length. So if I press the burst mode shooting now, we'll take five and a half frames per second at this locked focus position. Let's now consider the more complicated issue of looking at the focus modes on the FZ200 camera. If you're not set up face recognition and not familiar with the process, I'm just going to take you through the process of setting up face recognition. It's a useful tool if you are taking a group of pictures where there are people involved, as the camera will seek out faces and actually do the focus for you. You can also actually do what's called facial recognition. You can set a hierarchy of the people that you want the camera to recognize. So for example, if you've got a family, you could set the mother and the father as priority and set the children in law priority. You can set this hierarchy in the menu and I'm gonna take you through the process now of setting up facial recognition. To do that, first of all, we need to go into the menu and it's on the photo menu, page two. So again, using the zoom control to get me to page two, go down to face recognition and turn it on. So again, we use the cursor to move to the right hand side and we first of all need to memorize the faces that we want the camera to recognize in future events. So that process takes place with the setting called memory. When you select memory, the camera will ask you now to add a face to its portfolio. You can see that the camera is saying new. So to record the first picture, we just press menu set. It's asking you to position a full face within the guideline. So providing your eyes and nose and mouth are within the rectangular area, the camera will actually record that as a face. I'm using here a rag doll, but it will actually work quite well with human figures. So we now press menu set. So we now press the shutter button to record the image. If the registration is successful, it will ask you to register this person. 
if for example it's too small you won't get this message so we need then to just go to so we need then just to cursor up to yes again press menu set and it now gives you the option to add a name the age you can actually set the type of focus icon which will appear in the screen so let's go and add a name here so again we use the right hand cursor key to go across and we set the name again using the cursor buttons we can actually set the alphabet so I've used the cursor control to get across the D I want the O now and I want it to be in the second position so first of all we need to use the top control dial to move me to the second position for the next letter and now I can cursor down to the O and it's going to be the third press of the key to get there now I want L so I'm going to move to the third position cursor across third key press move across to the fourth position third key press now I want a space so I'll move across to the space key and I'm going to put doll number one so I need to get over to this cursor block to get me the numeric keypad so first of all you need to step through to this icon here which allows you to go between capitalized small numeric keyboard and symbols so I've now stepped through to the numeric keypad and it's brought up the numeric symbols for me here so again now I just need to cursor down to the number or letter that I want so I'm going to put doll number one when you've completed that you just need to press the set key and that will now name that doll one if you wanted to add the age of your children you can actually put that in here and if you wanted to change the way the focus icon appears on the screen then again cursor across to the right hand side and you get the choice of these little icons here so let's say we want to select the flower symbol so once the camera recognizes doll one and you press the shutter button you will see this flower icon appear rather than the regular green dot you can now see the camera has actually displayed the fact that it can recognize that face within the scene and it's brought up the name doll one and if I press the shutter button you notice that it's brought up the flower icon which is the one we select for the focus lock for that particular face if I move the camera left or right the camera will now track that face for me so you can see as I'm moving the camera from side to side the camera is locking focus on that doll Face recognition overrides all the other focus modes in the camera. So if you want to use the other focus modes of single point or 23 area, then you must turn off the face recognition. And again, just do that in the menu on page two, go down to face recognition and turn it off. It now gives you access to the focus areas. You notice here I normally use a single point area. To set that up, you can either use a quick menu or use the main menu. I normally use a quick uh, menu, it's, it's the fastest way to get into that menu option. Cursor down into it and you get the option to set one area and you can define that size and position or you've got the 23 area, you've got the autofocus tracking and you can turn face recognition on here without having to go into the main menu. So it's better to leave it off in the main menu and if you want to use face recognition use the quick menu option. The one area method is the one I principally use because I can actually set the point of focus that I want and know the camera will lock onto that. If you're using the 23 area, the camera will look at all those 23 areas, combine them into nine principal points and then try and set the focus. So it may not be the point that you want in your photograph that's actually focused. So I will normally use the one area and pre-select where I want to take the picture. So if we go into one area, press menu set, go back into the main menu, you can see we've got now displayed the single point area and I'm using the autofocus single shot method of focus. You now notice we have the focus square which has been set by the focus button on the side of the camera. I've set it to the position I want and to the size I want. So now when I press the shutter button halfway down it will focus and lock and take that picture. Let's now look at the other methods of focus and the next one to consider would be the 23 area 
So again using the quick menu and cursing down into the option to set it, cursor along set 23 area. So now when you press the shutter button halfway down, the camera will then look at those 23 areas that it can actually focus on and check whether there's anything in that area that are within the focus range that you've got the camera set to. So it will depend on the zoom setting you've got and it will depend on the distance of your camera to the subject. So if the camera can focus within that range, it will assign it to one of the focus areas. You notice that every time I press the button, there's a slight change in the way that it perceives the shot. And it doesn't matter whether you've got this locked down on a sturdy tripod, you'll always notice there's a slight variation in the number of rectangles it picks up and the position of those rectangles. You'll never notice more than nine as it groups those 23 areas into nine principal areas. When you press the button you'll get a focus lock symbol and the uh, green icon to indicate you have focus lock and you can take the picture. But as I mentioned before, it could select an area that you're not primarily interested in for the focus. So I tend to recommend people to use single point autofocus rather than 23 area unless you've got a subject where you can't define a single point. The next one to consider is the autofocus tracking and if we again select that using the quick uh, menu. Autofocus tracking allows us to define a subject and then it will follow that if the subject moves. So I'm just going to zoom out slightly so we can get more movement on the screen. When we selected the AF tracking in the quick menu you'll notice that we get a target area and whatever we place in that target area will be the subject that will be considered for AF tracking once we set the AF tracking on using the AF AE lock button. So in this case we're going to use the face of the doll, so if I just reposition the target area so it picks up the eyes and nose of the doll, when I press the AFA lock button it will attempt to try and define that area for us. So I'll press the AFA lock button and you notice now we've gone to a yellow square with a yellow crosshair which means that the camera has recognised that area and will actually try to hold it in locked position. Now if I move this subject it should attempt to try and follow that subject around. So as now as I'm moving the doll around, it will track that focus. And if I took the picture here, it would focus and lock there. And then revert back to its normal tracking mode. If the subject moves out of your area and it can't track it, you need to go back into your focus lock facility by pressing AFAE lock again to make sure that it locks on again. So if I move it too fast and we lose the area, you notice that it can't lock back on again afterwards. You just need to reacquire that target and then it will follow you around. So we set up the autofocus uh, method, which is going to be the single area, 23 area, tr tracking focus or facial recognition. Now we're going to set up the autofocus style. The, the style of focus can be AFS, AFF or AFC. There are slight and subtle differences between the AFF and the AFC mode. AFS is as it stands for, it's an autofocus single shot. So it only requires focus as you press the shutter button halfway down, it locks that position and then um, even if your subject changes position, the camera won't refocus. I can demonstrate that now in the uh, mode we have it here. So I've got autofocus single. If I move around the camera, press the shutter button halfway down, you notice the camera will acquire and lock focus. But if I'm holding the shutter button halfway down ready to take the picture and my subject moves, you notice that it goes out of focus. So if you've got a moving subject, AFS is not possibly the best use of your focusing system. Either switch to the AF flexible mode, which is a new mode that's introduced by Panasonic and a change in the algorithm that calculates the position of your subject. So the subject can move forwards or backwards in a random way and the camera can try and predict where the uh, subject is going to be in the next 1 50th of a second that the camera is using to use its exposure determination. If you use autofocus continuous, then it's a different algorithm and slightly slower than the AFF. 
if we switch to AFF or AFC, let's change to AFF mode. Let's go into the menu, cursor down and select autofocus flexible. Now when we go into our picture taking mode, again if I hold the shutter button halfway down, the camera will lock focus but will stay in its focus acquisition mode. So if I move the subject, the camera will track focus. And if I bring this up here, you can see that the camera is locked on focus. You can actually hear the camera lens trying to acquire focus as I move the subject backwards and forwards. So that's useful if you've got a subject that's changing directions, say a child running backwards and forwards or pets or animals moving backwards or forwards. The AFF mode is there to try and predict the next motion to try and get you accurate focus. Let's change to AFC again using the quick menu. And again, half pressing the shutter button will engage the focusing system. And again, it will track focus as I move the doll closer or further away. The camera will keep focusing to try and maintain your accurate focus. The rate at which you can change is governed by the focus motors and the mechanics of the lens system. So if you've got something that's changing speed fairly rapidly, um, if you're close to the lens, it may not accurately follow the focus. But things over three or four meters away, the camera should actually be able to track focus fairly well using its light speed AF system. So there we are, a quick recap of the autofocus and auto exposure lock button. Remember it's an autofocus or auto exposure locking facility, so it's only available in the P, the A or the S mode. If you're in the manual focus mode, you can use the A lock mode because you're locking exposure, but you won't get access to obviously focus lock because you're using manual focus. When it comes to automatic focusing, you've got the three styles of focus, the AFF, the AFC and the AFS. If you're using AFS, then you've got the option to set the size and position of your target. And that's normally the default method that I'll use. I get more consistent focus results using AFS and the single point area, which I can define on the screen where I want the focus area to be. If you want to use continuous autofocus, then obviously that's going to allow you to capture moving subjects. But ideally use the AFF mode as that's been a new mode designed by Panasonic to take care of subjects which randomly change position where the AFC requires a continuous motion in one direction or another for it to acquire the focus in a predictable way. Well that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found that recap useful. Of course if you don't subscribe to my channel please consider doing so and you can click the link that's shown in the video now and that will automatically subscribe you to the channel. You'll get notification then of when I upload other videos in this series. So until then, thanks for watching, take care and bye for now.